Welcome to a lesson on finding the solutions to polynomial equations and the zeros of polynomial functions graphically. A polynomial equation is an equation in which a polynomial is set equal to another polynomial. And the key word here is set equal to. So an equation is going to have an equal sign where an expression would not have an equal sign. Here are some examples of polynomial equations. 3x plus 15 equals 0. This is a degree 1 polynomial equation, commonly called a linear equation. x squared minus 6x minus 8 equals 0 would be a degree 2 polynomial equation, most often called a quadratic equation. x cubed equals 4x squared minus 8 is a degree 3 polynomial equation, often called a cubic equation and x to the fourth minus 4x equals 0 has degree 4 and this is called a quartic equation. Now we should note that an nth degree equation has at most n solutions. This video will only focus on finding real rational solutions to polynomial equations even though it is possible to have irrational and imaginary solutions to polynomial equations. We're going to talk about two graphical methods for solving polynomial equations. The first is the intersection method. For this method, we'll graph the left side of the equation as a function in y1. We'll graph the right side of the equation as a function in y2. And then we'll find the x-coordinates of the points of intersection of the two functions. The second graphical method will be the zero method. For this method, we'll set the equation equal to zero graph the non-zero side of the equation as a function, and then we'll determine the zeros or roots of the function, and these will be the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts will be the solutions. So again, on the intersection method, the x-coordinates of the points of intersection will be the solutions, and on the zero method, the x-intercepts will be the solutions. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's go ahead and solve this first one using both methods. We want to solve x squared equals 2x plus 3 graphically. So first, using the intersection method, we will graph the left side in y1 and graph the right side in y2. So let's go ahead and get out our graphing calculators. Press y equals. y1 will be x squared y2 will be 2x plus 3. So if you go back to our equation, we want to know when these two are equal, and that would be when they intersect. Let's press zoom 6 to make sure we have the standard window. We can see there are two points of intersection, which means there will be two solutions to this equation, which is what we normally expect when we have a degree 2 equation. The way we find the points of intersection, we press second trace, option 5, move the cursor close to the point we want to find first, let's find the one on the left first, press enter three times, because this equation is in terms of x, the x coordinate of this intersection point will be our solution, so x equals negative 1 is one solution, let's record that, let's go back to the calculator. Press second trace, option 5 again. Then move the cursor close to the other point of intersection. Press enter three times. And the second solution is x equals 3. That's how we use the intersection method. Now the drawback on this method is that you're never really sure where the intersection points will be they could easily be off the screen. The good thing about this method is you do not have to do any algebraic manipulation to solve this graphically. Now if we compare this to the zero method, we start with our given equation, and we have to set this equal to zero. So we will subtract 2x on both sides, and also subtract 3 on both sides. So the result the right side is equal to 0, and that's what we need. And the left side will be x squared minus 2x minus 3. 
So on the zero method, we only graph one function. We graph the left side in this case, and we look for the x-intercepts or the zeros of x squared minus 2x minus 3. Let's compare. And we're going to type this into y1. Press graph. And we can visually see it looks like we have an x-intercept at negative 1 and another x-intercept at positive 3. But let's go ahead and calculate those. Press second trace. Now the x-intercepts are also called the zeros or roots of the function. So we'll select option 2. Now here we have to do a little more work. If we want to find this x-intercept first, we need to move to the left of that point on the function. In this case, it would be above. Press Enter. Now it's going to ask for the right bound. You need to be to the right of that x-intercept, which in this case would be below. Press Enter, and then Enter again. And we can see our x-intercept is negative 1. Let's go ahead and find the other x-intercept, even though we can see it's going to be 3. Second trace. Option 2. Now, in this case, the left bound will be below this x intercept. Press Enter. Right bound will be above. Enter, Enter. So we can see it's x equals 3. So, as we expect, regardless of which method we use, the solutions will be the same. We want to solve the equation x cubed minus 2x squared is equal to 55x minus 56 using the zero method. So we need to set this equal to zero first. Let's go ahead and subtract 55x on both sides and also add 56. So the reason we do this is on the right side now we'll have zero. On the left side there are no like terms here to combine. We have x cubed minus 2x squared minus 55x plus 56. Because this is a degree 3 polynomial equation, you can expect at most three solutions. Let's go ahead and graph this in y1 and look for the hopefully 3x intercepts. Press graph. And as you can see, we don't have a very good picture of the graph. But really all we care about is where it crosses the x-axis. And we could go ahead and calculate these x-intercepts. But in this case, I can pretty much tell what they are. So let's go ahead and just list them. Here the x-value would be negative 7, positive 1, and positive 8. And these would be the three solutions to this degree 3 or cubic equation. Let's end on talking about the roots or zeros of a polynomial function. And these are the x values for which f of x is equal to 0. So graphically, the zeros or roots of a polynomial function will be the x-intercepts of the graph. So essentially, when we're using the zero method to solve polynomial equations, it's the exact same method we would use that if we were given a function instead of an equation and wanted to find the roots or zeros. And this is pretty much why I prefer the zero method to solve equations, because then you use the same method to solve an equation versus finding the roots of a polynomial function. So let's go ahead and graph this function and find the x-intercepts one more time. Let's press graph. Again, it's degree three, so we are expecting three x-intercepts. Unfortunately, we only see 2. Here we have an x-intercept of negative 5 and positive 4. Let's write those down. So one of these x-intercepts is off the screen. So what we can do now is press Window, extend the x-axis. Let's go from negative 15 to positive 15 and see if that makes a difference. And it does. This one originally was off the screen. And we can see this last zero is x equals 11. Thank you for watching and have a good day.